ドルパダボンゴレオガンドナチュチュカチチュイタドンドガユマリタコトトンジラムラネニドボボオンガコンビスチャンバムレラカチコンイタドンガイキンコノバムレラチコンスリモポトナルディオドンガコンガベ ダコジュスタミキグラブルボコカチチュイタボドンガトルドバンクオレオガンダナルチュチュモゲシャポンカボラワナチンデワムレスリモポドダナガコンビスウレラベスロンディホトンガクンハンカビワナコンデスチンパ
din Chatukunde. Vulnerables. Ka chikun ita hodonga. Yikin kuno ba mulera chikun. Stimo podona. Dio dunga kun kabe. Ita mandaya ka. Wata yuma. Wama huhu na dektek. Ah, ni patoga. Wano kuste ching palamula etonke. Kung di hotonga kun hanka mi. Wano kunte es ching palamule tonking ba nunotak. Tuk ning chatukunde vulnerables. Kachikun ita hodonga. Ikin kuno pa mulera chikun. Stimo po donar de hodonga ko hunkabe. Runda di hodonga kun hunkabe. Wana kun bes ching palamule tungking ba nunotak. Tuk ning chatukun ne mulera bes. Ui ita mandayata. Wata yuma. Wama huhu na dektek. Ah, shatung ni patoga. Wano kuste ching palamula etonke. Ka chikun ita hodonga. Ikin kuno pa mulera chikun. Stimo po donar de hodunga kuhung kame. Ka chikun ita... Get the bottom one and... Can I help? Yes, I did. I wanted to speak to you about our mission and what lies ahead for us. It seems fate, or the Force, is driving us into a confrontation with the Dark Lord. You must prepare yourself for when we face Malak. The confrontation will be difficult for you. I remember how hard it was when I first faced Revan. It's true that due to my battle meditation, I was with the Jedi Strike team that boarded Revan's ship. We did not kill Revan, however. Our mission was to capture Revan if possible. It was Malak who turned on his own master, firing upon Revan's ship while we were still on board it. It was his desire to kill us and his master both. Thankfully, we narrowly escaped the vessel as it exploded. As I said, we were there to capture Revan alive. The Jedi do not believe in killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what their crimes. Remember that Revan and Malak were once great Jedi, heroes in every sense of the word. They demonstrate the danger of the dark side to us all. I'm sorry, we really shouldn't speak of this anymore. The memory of my confrontation with Revan is painful. Let's return to the mission, please.
This is private property. By what authority are you trespassing on this estate? You have come from the Jedi Council. Master Matali wishes to speak with you. I will inform him that you are here. Remain at this location until he arrives. My protocol droid tells me you are here on behalf of the Council. I was beginning to think my demands had been ignored. Though I think your time would be better spent interrogating the Sandals as to the whereabouts of my son Shen. Many years ago, I brought my family here to Dantooine to escape the crush of humanity on the core world. Soon after we settled here, the Sandrils arrived, and they have been a plague upon my house ever since. The injustices the Sandrils have committed against the Matales are far too numerous to name. But the Council is well aware of our many disputes. Recently I discovered several Sandril droids trespassing on my land. I have no idea what nefarious purpose lay behind their arrival. My own assassination, perhaps? Destruction of my property? Maybe a simple spy mission? I wasn't about to find out. My own security droids destroyed the invaders. Not a single one survived. It was shortly after this incident that Shen, my only son and heir to the Metali estate, vanished. Obviously, Nurik, the unscrupulous head of the Sandral clan, has abducted my son in retaliation for the destruction of his droids. The only resolution possible is the immediate return of my son. Why does the Council insist on stalling? The life of my son is at stake. Is it possible... Yes, of course. Now I understand. I am a man of the world, Jedi. I know how things are done. I will make a contribution of a thousand credits to the Council in exchange for rescuing Shen from the Sandals. I will present the credits directly to you, of course. Whether the Council ever learns of this donation is completely up to you. Two thousand. Your greed is outstripped only by your utter lack of any sense of proportion, Jedi. You must not give in to your baser desires. The lure of the dark side is strong. For that price, I could purchase enough droids to destroy the entire Sandral estate. Two thousand is out of the question. Nevertheless, my offer still stands. A thousand credits for Shen's safe return. Know, however, that I will not sit idly by much longer. Eventually, I will take whatever action is necessary to rescue my son, including raising the entire Sandral estate. Until you find Shen, Jedi, we have nothing further to discuss. I suggest you hurry south to their estate, lest I take matters into my own hands.
This is private property. By what authority are you trespassing on this estate? The council. If you are here because of Shen Makali's disappearance, you are wasting your time. The Santos are not involved. This is nothing but a Makali witch hunt. Nero yet orders he was not to be disturbed, but given the circumstances, I will make an exception. Go into the main hall. Nero will meet with you there. I have been informed by my protocol droid that you wish to speak to me. I brought my family here to find peace and safety, not to be harassed and treated like common criminals. Your counsel has no authority here, and I respectfully ask you to leave this property at once. Jedi are renowned for their fairness in pursuit of justice. There is nothing to fear from us, unless you have something to hide. I trust you will show yourself out? If not, my security droids will be sure to deal with you. You are here from the Council, are you not? Looking for Shen Metale? My name is Raheja. 
Nurik is my father. He has not been himself since Cassus disappeared. He is mad with grief, and he is convinced the Metales are responsible. He's not thinking rationally. My father is a good man. When my mother died, he raised me and my brother by himself. He loves his children, and we love him. I just don't want you to judge him too harshly. You must understand that father has been under a terrible strain. I have no wish to disobey him, but there are matters where even my father's authority is not absolute. My father has kidnapped Shen Matale. He is holding him prisoner here in the compound. He feels this is a way to get back at the Matales, a way to get even for the disappearance of my brother Cassus. I see. Well, there is the answer we seek. The Jedi Council should be informed of this at once. No. Since Cassus went missing, my father has become unstable. He might hurt him if you do that. He no longer even cares if the Matales are responsible for what happened to Cassus. I am afraid my father will simply kill Shen out of a mad, misguided lust for vengeance. Shen is an innocent victim in all this. My father is not a bad man, but his grief has driven him to madness. He must be stopped. Please, find Shen and rescue him before my father does something he will regret forever. I would take you to the prison, but I cannot let my father see me with you. Take this key. It will open an unguarded door at the rear of the estate. You and Shen can make your escape through there. There are many security droids guarding the halls. Please hurry. You are Shen's only hope. Alan Matale and my father have had problems ever since they settled on this world. To hear my father tell it, Alan is a brute and a bully, but a rich one. He feels his credits give him the right to step all over normal people. My father stands up to Alan because no one else will. But now he thinks Alan has taken my brother Cassus and has imprisoned Shen as revenge. Please find Shen and free him. You are my only hope. Please, find Shen. There are many security droids guarding the halls. Shen and I, we... Well, we have been taught by our families to hate each other, just for being related to our fathers. But I met Shen alone one day in the city, away from his father. And, and Shen was so charming, so sweet. He didn't care at all that I was a Sandral. He just accepted me for who I was, with no reservations. We talked and met again over months and fell in love. My brother Cassus met him too, and they were beginning to become friends. But then this whole mess had to happen. Please find Shen and free him. You are my only hope. Nothing more to say to you. He left strict instructions he was not to be disturbed under any circumstances.
Find Shed there. Please. Who are you? What do you want with me? Are you working for my father? Rescue me? No, I won't leave. It's too dangerous. It's not my own safety I'm concerned about. I'm worried about the fate of Nurik's daughter, Rahasia. She's been trying to convince her father to release me ever since I was captured. If I escape, Nurik will think Rahasia is to blame. Nurik is insane with grief over the loss of his son, Cassus. If I leave with you, it is Rahasia who will suffer. I cannot allow that. If you can convince Rahasia to escape with us, I will accompany you. 
Though I do not know if she'd be willing to turn her back on her home and family. Who could imagine a Sandra doing such a thing for the sake of a Matali? But if she will not go, then I too shall stay. I would rather face my own death than have her face her father's wrath because I escaped. My father thinks the Sandrals are thieves and liars who followed him here to Dantooine just to steal what he has earned for himself. My father is an egotist and can be violent at times, but I think he still cares for me. Rahasia's father seems to be falling into the same pattern as mine. They're both too unreasonable to be talked to about the other. I think the only hope Rahasia and I will ever have is if we can escape both of them. Please, find Rahasia and speak to her. Get her to flee this place with me. What are you doing here? Have you found Shen yet? Shen can be so stubborn sometimes. If one of the security droids sees me wandering the halls, father will get suspicious. I can't risk it. But I know Shen would rather die than leave me here alone to face the wrath of my father. Tell Shen I will meet you outside the gates. I will wait as long as I can, but you must hurry. You're back. Have you spoken to Rahasia? I pray she is not just telling me what I want to hear, but I will have to take that chance. Hurry then, we must not keep Rahasia waiting. Shen, you're safe. Rahasia! Well, thank goodness you managed to escape. It was all thanks to this kind Jedi that we managed to get this far at all. I thank you, Jedi, for all that you have done for us. You're right. We should go as fast as we can. I don't know how long it will be before my father realizes we're gone. You're right. We should. There you are, Shen. Father! Mr. Matale! Rahesha! Father! Mr. Sandril! Nurik! Alan! I knew this was all your doing! I knew you had captured my son. You had taken my Cassus from me long before that. You started it. I don't want to hear any of your excuses. Now I will get revenge for your transgressions. We never ask for your help, Jedi. Do not press in matters that do not concern you. This is an internal affair for my family and is none of your concern. You should not interfere with our private business, Jedi. This will be resolved very shortly. My son doesn't know his head from his backside. I am the only one qualified to be making his decisions for him, and I say that he leave with me right now. No, I won't. I can choose my own path. Shen, how dare you? I am tired of you controlling my life. I love Rahasia, and I want to be with her forever. And I want to stay with Shen forever, Father. Don't disobey me, Shen. Come to me now and leave her. If you don't, I'll disown you. I don't care. Rahasia and I will live on our own if you won't accept us. You will do no such thing. I am your father, and I order you to come back with me. No, father, I won't. Rahasia, you will not leave with this... this Matale boy. I am, father, and you can't stop me. We're leaving for the Enclave. You foolish girl.
You think to make us stand here, then? You expect us to just let them leave? Droids, stop them! You will not turn your droids on my daughter. Droids, don't let them take Rahasia! We appear to be at an impasse, then. And they got away! It is your fault, Alan. You were always too violent for your own good. Me? You were the one who rushed out here with war droids! Do not tell me what to do, Jedi. The Council will hear of the trouble you caused here today. Indeed they shall. I'm here. Make this quick. Oh. Master Vatali has left orders to deny you entrance into the estate. He suspects a grievance will be filed with the Council for your actions. I'm sure the Council will realize these accusations are completely unfounded. The Metale grievance will fall on deaf ears. <laughs> Oh! 
Have you found the Mandalorian Raiders yet? Thank you, young master. My daughter can now, I think, rest in peace. Here is the reward I promised you. What? I did not think the Jedi were so greedy. You seem almost Mandalorian. I thank you for what you have done for me, but I have nothing else to give. The Council will hear of your deeds, and your greed. That was beneath you. I hope in the future you will strive to be better than this. Shen Matale and Raheja Sandral have fled their feuding families and asked for sanctuary here in the Enclave. The Council has granted this request. I have heard that it was by your actions that they managed to escape, and I must congratulate you for avoiding a potentially dangerous situation. Raheja Sandral and Shen Matale have come here seeking shelter against their families. The Council has decided to give it to them. Their love for each other was being denied by overly possessive parents. And we learned that it was only by your intervention that they managed to escape here. While it is regrettable that the fences between the families were not repaired, it is good that these two young lovers can live their lives free of oppression. You must not fail in your mission, young Padawan. Find you and Bastila. Greetings, young Padawan. Have you come as chronicler of you? May the f May the Force be with you. Shen and Rahasia have been granted asylum here at the Enclave until they can find a way to deal with their families. I hear you had something to do with that. It is the way of the Jedi to provide help to those in need, and you seem to have lived up to this duty. I congratulate you, Padawan.
Raheja and I cannot thank you enough for what you have done for us. Now we will finally have a place to share our love, without fear of reprisals from our families. Not yet, my friend. But perhaps someday soon. Raheja and I cannot thank you enough for what you have done for us. Now we will finally have a place to share our love, without fear of reprisals from our families. We will stay here for the next little while. We're still hoping our parents will learn to set aside their differences and welcome us back into their homes. If they do not, uh, well, perhaps you will travel to Coruscant or to the Core Worlds and make our fortunes there. Good luck to you both. May you find the happiness you deserve. I am sorry we have nothing of value to give you as a reward. Our families have cut us off completely. Had the Council not taken us in, we would be foraging in the wilderness to survive. We are waiting before the ceremony. Hopefully in time our fathers will agree to attend. If not, we plan to have a small, simple ceremony. You will be invited, of course. Ah,
How can I help? Yes, I suppose I can understand your curiosity, given the bond that connects us. Very well. I'll tell you a bit about myself. I was found to be strong with the force at a young age, as most Padawans are. As a girl, I was given to the Order to be trained. When I joined the Order, I left my family on Tal Raven, as all Padawans do. My family's still there, the last that I heard. I've had little contact with them, as it is discouraged. Relationships with family members are fraught with powerful emotions. Such extremes are to be avoided. Anger and hate are the worst, but even love can lead to folly. The gift of the Force comes with a high cost. Sacrifice of one's emotional attachments is one of the prices a Jedi must be willing to pay. The alternative is to fall prey to the dark side. Emotional entanglements can be dangerous. They can impair rational thought. They can lead to outbursts of uncontrolled emotion. A Jedi must be above such things. It can be a hard lesson to learn. I was not on good terms with all my family, but I do remember missing my father terribly for a long time. Very close. I was only a little girl when I left my family, but I still remember him fondly. He was kind and gentle and doted on me. My mother, however, was different. I was not in good terms with my mother. I was only a little girl when I left, but I was old enough to resent her and the way she treated my father. She pushed my father into treasure hunting. I spent all my young life on ships, traveling from one false lead to the next. She whittled away my father's entire fortune. And I hated her for it. I think she was relieved to give me to give her die. My father was hard. The child is too young to understand the sacrifices that must be made. It's better if they have no contact with their family once they're removed. Once I was older, I realized the wisdom of this policy. A Jedi must do what is needed. Personal desires not the same. Love can only obscure and confuse the matter. Even a Jedi cannot always control the feelings of the heart. We must do our best to guard against it, no matter what the cost. Some sacrifices are harder than others. I, I do not wish to discuss this anymore. I would rather return to Ocean. Yes, what's on your mind? Have I been quiet? Suppose I have. I guess I just don't like being left out of the loop. Left out of the loop, you know, not being told anything strung along. It's really starting to irritate me. For one thing, I want to know what the Jedi Council said to you. They pulled you in there and refused to tell me a thing about it. I'm rather curious to know what went on and why they didn't keep you on Dantooine for training. Isn't that strange?
And why is that? You were a great help on Terrace, but why would they keep you with us? Don't they... don't they have to train you? A bond? What kind of bond? You mean to say that they told you that you were tied to Bastila in some way? <laughs> I have trouble believing that. I've been watching you. You can be cruel and impulsive. A Jedi without self-control or training. And yet the Council sends you on your way. Why? I am not trying to provoke you or to imply that you're somehow responsible for the Jedi Council, but give me a hand here. There has to be a reason. No, I don't... I didn't mean that you weren't wanted, or that I want to go, it's just... Damn it! Well, I'll tell you this much, I'm not gonna wait around until I'm betrayed again. Yeah, we'll just see about that, won't we? Look, I didn't mean it that way, I want to get to Saul, not... No, no, forget it. It just seems that all I can do is insult you, isn't it? Just forget I said anything. Let's let's just get on with what we were doing. How can I help? I do. I've been watching you. Studying you closely to see what kind of progress you've made since your training at the hands of Master Zah. I've seen you give in to temptation and indulge your baser emotions on many occasions. I'm afraid you are on the path that leads to the dark side. You need to see what the dark side represents in its entirety, for it is what we battle. Only the wisdom of a Jedi Master can truly explain this, but I will do my best to make you understand. The dark side is not simply giving in to anger, or temptation, or to use the Force to destructive ends. These things only lead to the dark side. The dark side grows stronger and more insidious the closer you draw to it. It begs you to surrender to it, to release all its terrible power, and it becomes harder and harder to resist. And once you stop resisting, it's too late. It twists you up inside and turns you into a mockery of everything you once stood for. We need only to look at the atrocities which have been committed by those under its sway to understand the terrible, corrupting evil of the dark side. Millions dead, and far more suffering. What sort of person would you have to become to perform such deeds gladly? One who serves the light does not strike down an innocent. We take arms against the dark side and the injustice that follows it only. It's so easy to think that we would never fall prey to such a horror, that we have unlimited control, vigilance, and foresight. If only that were true. The Sith have become powerful because there are many Jedi who've succumbed to the lure of the dark side and joined their cause. What greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause? to use their own knowledge against them. We are weakened while they are strengthened, so we must harden our hearts and do whatever is required to fight against the dark side, even when the battle becomes wearying. I don't know. The vision of our future is clouded by shadows cast from the dark side, but I sense something ominous lurking in those shadows. But words alone cannot save one from the dark side. Come, we should continue with the task at hand. When the time comes, I only hope we are all strong enough to do what we must.
Lord Malak, the Star Forge is operating at 200% capacity, far beyond our expectations. I am more interested in the young Jedi Bastila and her battle meditation. Have you learned how she escaped the destruction of Taris? She was aided by Karth Onasi, a decorated war hero of the Republic and a legendary soldier. During the Mandalore Wars, he was honored many times for his bravery. You know this man? Yes, Lord Malak. He served under me when I still followed the Republic. You could say I was his mentor. Interesting. How did you acquire this information, Admiral? An eyewitness, Lord Malak. Kalo Nord, a bounty hunter, was there when Bastila and Karth escaped the planet. Apparently, they left him for dead. A Jedi and a war hero. It's a wonder you survived the encounter. I am hard to kill, Lord Malak. Kalo has agreed to help us capture the young Bastila for a very hefty fee, of course. But I assure you, he is well worth the price. His reputation as a bounty hunter is well earned. Her companions are nothing to me, Kalo. But I desire the young Jedi taken alive, if at all possible. Lord Malak, forgive me, there is something else. May we have a private audience away from the ears of the common soldiers? I trust you are not wasting my time, Admiral Carath. I promise you will be very interested in what Kalo has to tell you about Bastila's other companions, Lord Malak. has given us a, a vision, like the one we shared on Dantooine. Did you see it? Of course. You must have. The Force is strong with us both. Tatooine is known for little but blowing sand. I find it surprising that there would be a star map somewhere in its desolate wastes. Perhaps, though that would have been tens of thousands of years in the past. Now there's nothing but the howling emptiness of the Dune Sea. A star map would likely have to be within some kind of shelter to protect it against dust and sandstorms. I suspect there are many such caves and caverns hidden in the sands of the Dune Sea. The creatures of this world probably use them as their lairs. No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location.
I be of assistance to you, Padawan? What is it you would like to speak to me about? I, I, I thank you for your concern, but I am still a bit shaken. I have been thinking about myself, about Quatra, and about my fall to the dark side. I keep thinking that it was my anger that drove me that far, that nearly damned me. I look inside myself now and I can still see it. I still feel it. More time would do me good. Time to distance myself from that anger. I think that is why the Council agreed to send me with you. They think, perhaps, that in your company, I will be able to free myself from it. I thank you for your concern and your acceptance. I will strive to prove that I am worthy of your company and trust. How may I be of assistance? What is it you would like to speak to me about? How I came to be a Jedi? I am sure you would not find it very interesting. Are you sure you would like to hear? Well, it goes back a number of years. Back on my homeworld, we did not see Jedi very often, especially where I lived. It was not the homeworld of the Cathar that I lived on. My parents had long fled from that place, and perhaps that is a story for another time. Rather, it was a human hive world that I was raised on, the hind end of space, a pit of a world, to be sure, where Jedi rarely tread. But we had heard of them. Well, everyone had, so that is not to be unexpected. Champions of truth, defenders of justice, Heroes of the Republic. It was very easy for a child to be enthralled by their image, their mystique. Maybe I was one of those children. Yes, yes I did. When I saw a Jedi for the first time, they lived up to everything my imagination had created them to be. I was old and maybe a little enamored. From that moment on, I knew that I would have to try to become a Jedi. To lift myself out of the rut I had been living in for years, and to make a real difference, as the Jedi were. <laughs> the foolish delusions of a child. But this child made it happen. As soon as I was able, I left my world and went in search of them. I found them and was accepted. I had been living my dream on Dantooine for several years before you came. Although... Perhaps I was not entirely ready for it, or not completely suited to the task. Otherwise, I would not have fallen. But thanks to you, I have been redeemed. Perhaps I may yet live to see that dream of mine come true. Come, there is much we should do. Let us not waste time talking. Action is what is needed.
Yeah, what do you want? You want another war story, huh? You want to hear about some other world getting wasted, eh? I knew you were the type. Your stagnant republic has never seen some of the strange creatures and races we fought on the Outer Rim in those years. <laughs> and you never will now. If a world isn't strong enough to defend itself, it's basically forfeit. But this story is about something a little different. We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy, playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shells, and the pirates were using them for cover. Ha! <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover. But that was a mistake. The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most, maybe a dozen meters on a side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other, just a ball covered in frozen gas. But something must have been... Inside it, something inactive in the cold. The heat of my blast might have triggered something or woken something up. After I'd hit it, spots of light and heat appeared all over the thin shell, still covering it, evaporating the gases. What lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth. A deformed rock, pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars. I think something even older might have been inside that. Maybe. But maybe not. It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. After a second, it started spraying fire, thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. Anything that wants to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. That's the only story I have for now. I'll tell you some more stuff later if we get the chance. Is there something else? Tatooine is one big desert, with rocks sticking out. I heard that some of my people came here after the war but I don't know what happened to them. The world of my clan, Ordo, was much like this. Dust basins and rock crags. But my world at least has some green around the equator. This place is just sand all over. There are some vicious people on this world, but the desert is the real enemy. Trips out in the desert, especially the deep desert, should be taken very carefully. Do you have anything else you want to ask? Your choice. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Selima wanga kun biking. Mucho shaka panga. Mucho shaka panga.
mucho shock apaga. Mucho shock apaga. Ton ki ba non ton tek. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Selima wanga kun bikin. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Tong ki ba non tontek. Tong abuk shami no nok. Mucho shaka paga. Tong ki ba non tontek. Tong abuk shami no nok. Tong abuk shami no nok. Tong ki ba non tontek. Selima wanga kun bikin. Tong ki ba non tontek. Tong abuk shami no nok. Tong Tong Kipuna, bona na kichu. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Tong abuk shami no nok. Mucho shaka paga. Tong abuk shami no nok. Mucho shaka paga. Mucho shaka paga. Tong abuk shami no nok. Mucho shaka paga. Mucho shaka paga. Tong abuk shami no nok. Mucho shaka paga. Selima wanga kun bikin. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Selima wanga kun bikin. Kipuna. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Tong ki ba non tontek. Tong ki ba non tontek. Tong abuk shami no nok. Mucho shaka paga. Selima wanga kun bikin. Kipuna, 
bona na kichu. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Tonki ba non tontek. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Tong. Kipuna. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Tonki ba non tontek. Mucho shakapaka. Tonki ba non tontek. Tonki ba non tontek. Mucho shakapaka. Selima wanga kun bikin. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Tonki ba non tontek. Tong abuk shami no nok. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Selima wanga kun bikin. Mucho shakapaka. Tong abuk shami no nok. Tong ki ba non tontek. Mucho shakapaka. Mucho shakapaka. Selima wanga. Kipu. Tong. Tong. Tong abuk shami no nok. Kipuna, bona. Mucho sh. Tong abuk shami no nok. Tong ki ba non tontek. Tong abuk shami no nok. Mucho shakapaka. Mucho shakapaka. Tong abuk shami no no. Mucho shakapaka. Mucho shakapaka.
Welcome to Anchorhead, potential customer. Zerka Corporation stands ready to serve, after some formalities, of course. First, your ship is not on our list of planned arrivals for today. There is a docking fee of 100 credits because of this. The immediate benefit is access to these very docking facilities. This is the only port in Anchorhead. Once you've paid, we will offer trade services as well. We're not unreasonable, we just want to cover expenses. You know, I don't think you need to pay the fee. We'll let it go this time. I'm amazed at how many people that works on. The entire galaxy must be filled with weak-minded fools. This will cover any future landings as well. It's like a registration, so we can serve you better when you return. Now, as a customs officer, I can provide information on services. Is this visit business or pleasure? There isn't much to tell. It's a very old planet, well, past its prime. Zerka Corporation is the only company with any interest in it. It's not a very pretty world. But there is opportunity here, if you know where to look. I can't really get into that. It hasn't been a very smooth operation. I shouldn't get into it. I... I can tell you more, I guess. It's not a big secret or anything. Just not good for business. You see, Zerka Corporation staked their claim to this planet based on some very promising geological surveys. Unfortunately, that information was incorrect, and possibly even a, an attempt at sabotage by a rival company. Not totally barren. There were a few good years of mining, and limited operations are still in place. But the ore is flawed. It has peculiar properties. They've had to look at other forms of business. Zerka Corporation has really tried to hide this, but it just seems that Tatooine metal is unfit for effective manufacturing. I would imagine that this outpost will eventually be abandoned. Nobody is making any money here. Of course, this rock may have been settled a few times, so look for some other company to get stuck with it. Pursuits that uh, appeal to the casual traveler. There are some fearsome native species that provide exciting hunting. There are also lengthy barren wastes that serve as fine soup tracks. Attracting business has been slow, however. Very little. There are hints that it might once have been a lush world, but I can't picture it as anything but a desert. Native sentient species have no records going back that far. That was hundreds of years ago, maybe thousands. Of course, the native species are not very willing to tell anyone anything. They're <laughs> barely more than animals. The sand people. They're vicious, and attack outsiders on sight. More animal than anything, really. Maybe they know the history of Tatooine. Maybe they don't. Impossible to tell. They won't cooperate. Not personally, but they've given Zerka Corporation a rough time. It's hard enough mining this rock without suffering random attacks. I think the company has even put a bounty on them. But I'm sure not going to try for it. The Jawas are scavengers, and a bit primitive. Hard to understand. They have an affinity for droids. Some of our scientists believe that they may not be native to the planet. But how they got here, they may not even know. As I said, they're hard to understand. They usually end up slaves to the Sand People. They aren't fighters. Good traders, though.
Not personally, but they've given Zerka Corporation a rough time. It's hard enough mining this rock without suffering random attacks. I think the company has even put a bounty on them, but I'm sure not going to try for it. It depends on what level of risk you want to take. You could ask at the Zerka office if any bounties need collecting. That's in the central anchor head. While you're at the office, ask for a hunting license so you can sell trophies to Faza in his lodge, just north of them. I suppose you could also take up swoop racing. Talk to the hut at the registration office by the track. That's in West Anchor Head. I can't say I know which of these jobs is the most dangerous. I stay away from all of them. That's not much information. Could you tell me more? You a digger? I've heard of ruins being found now and then, but they've always been stripped by sand people soon after. You're not going to get anywhere with them. I guess you could ask around, but I doubt you'll learn anything different. You could always ask a Jawa. It's hard to tell what they know. It depends on what level of risk you want. Well, I... As you wish. If you need anything else, I'll be here.
Tatooine's a dust bowl, and that's all it'll ever be. Thank you. 